This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Justin Strawn and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show. Say hi, hi to my co-host, Ryan Nelson. Justin, if Donald Glover is going to claim to be six foot, I'm going to claim to be six <laughs> foot as well. Yeah, that man's not six feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> he's like five seven at best. <laughs> yeah, at best. So yeah, he's not no six feet tall. There's no way. So yeah. uh, if you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast a few years ago, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoyed as we talked about the first four episodes of Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Prime Video. Now look, if you're saying, hey, I watched in all eight episodes, I'd like to hear about all eight episodes. Don't worry. Sunday night when we record, because we're recording this actually the weekend before it comes out, uh, on Sunday night after it comes out we record about the next four episodes so you don't have to wait too terribly long so uh whether or not you are a new or a regular and would like more access to the show visit our patreon page and become a patron of the main attraction podcast go to patreon.com slash the main attraction podcast and you can get patreon only content you can support us at a three five ten or twenty dollar level and when you join up we'll shout you out here on the show if you want to add free access to the podcast any level of being a patreon supporter will get the show ad free doesn't matter which level you are signing up for uh, you will get the show ad free if you you want additional bonus content though that's where those uh higher levels come in the five the ten the twenty dollar level uh, if you want some additional content that's what you need to sign up for but if you just want the show ad free that's all you care about then just sign up for the three dollar level and you can get our show without listening to ads over on patreon if you can't be a patron though you can still help the show out you can go to spotify or you can go to apple podcast if you have either of those platforms and most of you do because that's where most of our listeners come from uh and leave us a five star rating on both one or both we'd love to have a five star rating on both of them uh, and if you have time while you're sitting there on apple podcast and want to drop us a quick review we'd love that too uh if you do we'll read it on air next time we record and if you want to interact with us in any other way you can do so as well by sending us an email go to main at gmail.com uh, send us any thoughts or questions you might have any recommendations for things you might would like to see us cover here in the not too distant future uh we'd love to hear all those things so like i said uh if you'd like want to interact with us feel free to do so by sending us an email to main at gmail.com inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious colombian businesswoman griselda blanco comes a new netflix original limited series griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery creates one of the most powerful cartels in history witness sofia vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld griselda now streaming only on netflix All right, real quick, uh, just one more thing about uh, the Patreon. Uh, if you're listening to this and you are a free member, because we don't really have any benefits for our free members, I've I'm, I'm always been curious uh, what people are signing up for when they sign up for the free thing. Uh, you can contribute to a, a Patreon episode for next week, and we will make this one available to people who are signed up for the free one. Uh we're doing a Q&A with our patrons. We've gotten a few questions already. So if you're one of those that are listening and you're signed up on the f- free version of our Patreon, Patreon uh, go over there and check it out and send us, some, send us some questions and we will answer those for next week. So like I said, just make sure you get those in uh, before Sunday of next week. So, And like I said, we will also make the episode available as well. So when we record that, we'll make it available to the general public. So um, also might be a little preview for those of you who are out there and thinking, hey, maybe I, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't do the, uh, the Patreon. Uh, maybe if I hear something, I might go ahead and sign up. So we'll make that available to everybody next week. So, All right. Before we get into this show, let's talk real quick about the movie that came out in 2000. 2007. I'm assuming you've seen the 2007 Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Is it 2007? I thought it was before that. No, it was 2007. I looked all that up because I was very curious about uh, some of the timing of it. 2005. I thought that's when it was started and then it came out in 2007. That's what I thought. Or, no, I it wrong? came out 2005. Okay, well, maybe I was just wrong. I mean, I had it, the dates were wrong, so. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I love the 2005 movie with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Fantastic film. Yeah, it, it's a good film. I don't, I, I don't like it as much as you do. I think it's good. Uh, yeah. I, I, but like I said, I'm, it, I'm perfectly fine with. It. I don't think it's just fantastic, but I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it, it's a film that got probably more buzz than it probably would have had. 
yeah. it not been for the fact that this is kind of like the end of Angelina, not Angelina, uh, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston's Je- romance and their and way. The, and the start of their of this this new romance. Yeah, the start of Brangelina, uh, Brad Pitt and, yeah. and Angelina Jolie. So like I said, that one it's probably got a little bit more traction in the culture for that very reason. Uh, yeah. It was, look, it did really well at the box office. It was the seventh oh, highest yeah. growing, uh, seventh highest grossing film of the year. Uh, it was was made for 110 million dollars it made for 85 i think somewhere around that area so like i said that i mean that's exactly what you want out of a film you know you, you bring home four yeah. five, almost five times as much as as you put into it so uh that's exactly what you're looking for it's got it had two highly bankable stars uh and you know it's, it's, that fact that it did well is not surprising well, um, it's also a very sexy movie they yeah. them together and right there was great action uh vince vaughn in a hilarious like co-starring role right. Uh, you know, it was it was a it was a really fun movie. Like especially if you took you know a date or something to right. it. Right, and like I said, we haven't really seen anything, or they haven't done anything with that ever since then. No. And so Donald Glover approached the person who created this show, and he was like, you know, I'd like to do kind of a different take on on the Mr. and Mrs. Smith thing. So the premise of Mr. and Mrs. Smith in the movie was you have a married couple who just both happen to be spies for secret organizations uh, i've never really understood exactly who they was that they actually worked for in that yeah, yeah um but they're apparently rival organizations and the, when the, they find when their organizations find out that they're both married to each other and they don't even realize that they're both uh super secret spies which you would yeah. kind of imagine you know you the the in the film they meet in bogota when it is like getting like bombed and stuff like this right, like, right. why do you both yeah. just happen to be there it, it might should have yeah. uh, raised up a few red flags but nevertheless uh and then they try to kill each other then they realize that they actually are in love uh and then they team up together to fight the people who are trying to kill them so it, it looks it's a fun movie uh it, it really is a fun movie uh i haven't seen it in forever but it, i did enjoy it when i actually saw it so but this the purpose of this is basically donald glover and who made who's the creator of this television show well it was supposed to be him and florence waller bridge from uh fleabag right. and they could not get along Oh really? I didn't know that. Uh, so they had like like creative differences, and and she left. Okay. And I think uh, For Francesca Sloan took over. Yeah, and then like Donald Glover's brothers and one of the writers. Right. So they, this is kind of like Donald Glover's brainchild. He wanted to, yeah. to take this and just kind of take the show into make a show that has. A similar premise but just kind of flip it on its head so instead of having two people who are married that don't even know each uh, that don't know each other are part of spies they're actually put together by a company and they are forced to be married by a company a super secretive spy organization so uh like i said it's an interesting premise uh what were your initial thoughts on those first four episodes yeah, I really liked it. I thought uh, it was, like you said, I like how they changed the premise up. Right. And it also was an uh, interesting take because you were watching these two people fall in love. Right. You know, as, as the show was going, as the first four episodes were going on. And it was, you know, it kind of reminded you of like those strangers meeting on a train movies mm-hmm. where they are falling in love or or like those movies with Ethan Hawke before sunrise, before sunset. So like, you know, the first couple of episodes, they're kind of getting to know each other and right. falling in love. And then they're, you know, really in love trying to take care of each other as, we, as we've as we moved on the series. I thought the chemistry between the two leads, Maya Erskine and Donald Glover, was off the charts. Yeah. I thought they were really, really good together. Uh, the cameos are just insane. Yeah. Every time you turn around, some other big star, you know, shows up, uh, which is, you know, one thing I would like to discuss. Like, I'm, I'm not sure why Amazon's dropping this all at once. It, yeah. It makes no sense. It is odd that they are dropping this all at once because you i mean as much as they are putting into this you would think that and they haven't been advertised i have have you been seeing no before? the only reason the only reason i even knew this thing existed was because the screener showed up in our mailbox <laughs> well they dropped a trailer like in december or yeah something, and i never saw reacher was coming yeah i but never yeah I'm, yeah, I never saw the trailer, and then I saw this on, I saw this on our, our in our screeners. We got an email saying yeah. that we had we had screeners to it, and I was like, oh, well, let me see if there's a trailer for it. And there was. And I was like, okay, well, this looks pretty good. So we decided we go ahead and cover it. So we had some stream uh, some screeners for it. And I really truly thought when I saw the, when I saw who was involved with it, and when I saw uh, 
the the trailer's like, oh, this has to be a a week to week thing. You know, they'll do three episodes, yeah. and they're they're not doing it that way. They're doing it all at once. I mean, so. this this feels like if it was done correctly, this would be a huge hit. Yeah, it really does. So, like I said, I'm really curious as to why they they changed directions yeah. on, on on this thing. So, uh, my initial thoughts on it, I really, really enjoyed the first three episodes. The fourth episode, though, really made me question some things. Because uh, I think they're kind of undermining a lot of what they did in the first three episodes. But we'll get into that when we get to the fourth episode. But like I said, so I'm, I'm just really confused by that by the fourth episode, and I'll talk about that when we get there. So let's start with episode one. Obviously, it is called First Date. Uh, it starts with a bang. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. very first right out of the gate, we've got Alexander Skarsgård and uh, Isaac Gonzalez from Baby Driver. Plus, she's going to be in the Three Body Problem coming out on Netflix here in a couple of months. Uh, so, like I said, we're, we're starting with the bang, uh, and these two are apparently another version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, they are together. They are they're obviously out in this remote area, and then they get, uh, then all of a sudden, their they their securities stuff, their all their security alarms and stuff start going off, uh, and they start and Alexander Skarsgård's character starts saying, you know, we got it, we got to pack up, we got we got to get out of here, we got to you know do all this stuff to you know get out of here. And Isaac Gonzalez says, you know, I'm just tired of running. I, I don't want to run anymore. And so they decide to fight. But it goes poorly for them. Like, yeah, uh, they don't even. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård is sitting there telling, like, discussing strategy with her, and then the next thing we know, we hear a thunk and we see a hole in his in one side of his face, and then we see the exit wound, and it's huge, and he drops yeah. dead. Isaac Gonzalez ends up getting killed. Uh, your thoughts on this initial opening? I was shocked to see Alexander Skarsgård yeah, get too. killed that quickly. Yeah, I know. I was like, I was one. I was shocked just to see him, to say the least. Yeah, I know. Because when I started, I was like, wow, I didn't know he was in this. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, we get these two like pretty big, you know, pretty big cameos yeah. to start with, and then uh, you know they're killed pretty much immediately as soon as as soon as we're introduced and to him. So I watched this twice. I went back. I was like looking. I was like. Is that Parker Posey and Wagner Mora? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I, you can't really tell. You can't tell. It kind of looks like Parker Posey, though, but you can't tell. Yeah, you, you can't tell. So, like I said, I was really, uh, I, you know, it's a, it's a great way to start start this thing yeah. off. And it's obviously, you know, I'm assuming, I have not watched episodes 5 through 8 yet. I haven't either. Uh, so, I'm assuming that we might be doing some foreshadowing for some things that might end up happening to uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Smith we get to know and love throughout the course of this thing. So, uh, because again, you don't start that way if you don't want, if that's not going to mean yeah. something later on down the road. So, uh, but after all this, after this thing takes place, we finally meet Maya Erskine and Donald Glover's John and Jane Smith. And they are interviewing through a computer, which we are going to end up seeing quite a bit of, uh, the Hi Hi computer. Uh, and like I said, basically the interview process is just us kind of understanding who these characters are and just kind of what their backgrounds might be. Uh, what was your initial thoughts about your introduction to these two? Yeah, I was like, uh, I, I like how they introduced them and how different they were. You could kind of see how they were matching them up anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially when I watched it the second time, I was like, oh, so just some of the stuff they're saying, you could see why they're a good match. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. I think that's they, they're trying to show you some very intentional stuff they're doing there uh, yeah. in that in that process. But basically, the first 15 minutes or so, this is the first episode. Uh, like I said, it's called First Date. And it's kind of about, you know, the awkwardness of just kind of being forced into um, yeah. a marriage yeah. together. You know, what are the what are the boundaries? Uh, you know that they don't, you can tell that they don't really trust each other. Uh, and, you know, so like I said, there's there's a lot of awkwardness around it, uh, yeah. and like I said, so it, and it makes sense because, like I said, these two people are, are being forced into this relationship together, uh, and you know neither one of them really knows exactly what's supposed to be. But I thought it was a, a good way to introduce us to these two characters. Uh, but the next day, when the the couple wakes up, uh, they they're sleeping in separate bedrooms at this point. Uh, they have to go to a restaurant because they have their mission finally. They got their first mission, and they're supposed to be uh, scoping this woman. Uh, what was the name of the woman? Let me pull her up real quick. Uh, it's played by Tamara Torres. I don't, I'm not familiar with her, but her name is Marla. Um, at least I'm assuming that's who this is. Uh, or is it, was it Aki Ando? I'm, 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not even. It wasn't somebody yeah. I recognized. I wasn't really sure if I was supposed yeah. to. Then I looked up IMDb and it's like, okay, I don't think it is. It is somebody I'm supposed to recognize? So anyway, uh, but they're they're just kind of scoping her out. And again, this is when Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Jane and John, are getting to kind of know each other a little bit. They're talking a little bit about their background, about what they've been doing. Uh, again, you can tell they don't completely trust each other. They're still really guarded in their interactions with each other. Uh, but like I said, it's. You, you feel the awkwardness, but you also feel the fact that these two people are obviously supposed to be good at what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on how they were handling this opening section of the, of it was, the stakeout? It was, it was fun to watch this, because like you said, I like how uh, John was asking her a lot of questions when she was, you know, stalking. And right. it was Marla looking at the IMDb. Okay. It's Marla. Okay. When he's stalking Marla and, like, trying to figure her out. And yet he's still figuring her out. And you can see, you know, they're kind of flirting and, right. and getting to know each other. But they're still doing a good job of, of actually stalking her. Because, like, when John actually grabs that package to look like he has a package as well, I was like, right. oh, that's smart. Yeah. And even even the way uh, Jane as well, like how she gets into that theater where she acts like the older lady is her mother right. and takes her ticket. Yeah. Like that was, you know, that was really smart. So I like how they're showing that these, uh, like they're learning about each other, but they're also capable spies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the, I, I agree with you on pretty much all of that as well. So then, you know, I, I thought also, you know, again, they're using some of this time to get to know each other. And when they, when she goes into the play, uh, she can't talk because she's actually in the play, but so she's texting the entire time while he's actually talking to her in ear. Just an, an interesting way to have us get to know these characters a little bit. Also, this idea about she met up with a pedophile when she was a teenager in New York, and yeah. you know, just you know what all that means. And we later find out that it wasn't really her idea; it was the, her friend's idea. So, uh, but nevertheless, it's she's just constantly kind of like putting these things in, in front of John to see how he'll react and just see what he'll do to it, uh, see what he's going to end up doing as a result uh she's doing this throughout the, throughout the in the the series constantly even after the point where they've gotten uh, yeah. romantically linked together so but then this is when the chase starts so, so their mark ends up getting up in the middle of the play uh she on she grabs a package from the coat check and this is when they're actually chasing her to, to get the the package that they're supposed to retrieve um and like I said, so this is our first real feel for excitement is when we first kind of see what they these two can do on their feet. Uh, they're constantly, you know, they're having come up with ideas. So they're really trying to make us think that they're trying to put us in. They want us to believe that these two are, are very good at what they do, that they have experience doing this type of stuff and that they can think on their, th uh, they can think quickly on their feet and respond to things. Uh, and but it's like you said when you know when he's getting the package, uh, when he's coming up with a decoy, you know when she runs into the, the other lady and gets the other package, like I said, all of it works really well. And I thought that was a really mm -hmm. solid sequence of events. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I thought the same thing. I, like I said, they they did a good job of you know pulling the, the mission off, and I, right. I was even a little concerned they weren't going to do. Right. But like obviously they have experience in this kind of yeah. uh, realm. Uh, so when they finally get the package to the place they're supposed to deliver to, it ends up being a cake. Uh, did you think it was going to be anything besides a cake? I didn't know what it was. I didn't. I had, I had no clue. And when it was a cake, I was like, "Where is this going?" Yeah, I know. Because like I was, uh, I put in my notes like. I'm sure John, John and Jane are looking at this cake just as confused as I was when when they dropped yeah, it off. I thought maybe this was some kind of weird test, you know? Right. They were I, test, the company was testing them to see if they could pull it off. That was my initial thought. I was like, well, okay, well, this yeah. is obviously just something just to see if they could actually do this job. Uh, yeah. So, you know, they end up walking out. And then, the, then the house blows up. like, oh, that was the actual yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, it took me by surprise. I, I, you know, it probably should have been registered in my mind that the that was going to have a bomb inside of it uh but the only thing the reason i didn't recognize the fact that it could be a bomb like why did this old lady have a package with a bomb in it with a, in a cake with a bomb I don't know. so I like know. I said, did she know yeah i was like curious like did she know that that was a bomb in there as well did the did the old lady know that yeah and i like uh the way they handled themselves after the bomb right was very impressive yeah it was because all of a sudden you know they weren't expecting that now they're on the run and they're trying to figure out you know, how do we get away from this situation so that we're not somehow suspects to this entire thing? Uh, so, like I said, they do it. It's a really impressive. It's impressive to watch these two kind of navigate that because even like when they're running away and they're going to the alley, they're looking at these people who are just looking at them. And like, yeah. are people, you know, are they, are they tying us to this to this explosion? So it's really really good. Um, the episode ends with 
a somewhat intimate conversation between the two of them. They kind of let their guard down for the first for the first time, uh, but they still don't really have. They're still not in the relationship at this point. Uh, you, you you feel it's coming, and if you see the trailers, you know that it is coming. But you yeah, obviously yeah. feel that, they, that eventually this thing is going to to evolve into a romantic relationship. But like I said, I thought it was a good introduction, a good first episode. Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought it was like if you're wanting to do a pilot episode, this this is the way to do it again. Like you introduce these characters that have a lot of charisma, they have like great chemistry together, and right. you, can, you want to see more from them and, and to watch this relationship go, grow and to see how they you know deal with this job. So I thought it was very good. Again, it would have been a perfect episode to start off with. You right. could have just dropped one of these. Yeah, you could have. You really could have. It would have been, it would have been perfect to just drop one and then just keep on going so, uh, with uh, yeah. doing it weekly, but they decided not to. So, yeah. you know, they don't ask us, so who? Oh, well. Yeah. All right. Uh, second episode, it is called Second Date. Uh, it opens with John meditating and Jane going through his stuff. Uh, the cat is with Cat Max, uh, who we det- determined as well that uh, the cat was actually came with. Uh, Jane, she actually this was and that actually, was very funny. That it was. was that was funny when she was acting like it wasn't her cat. Yeah, so like she's sitting there very adamant that the cat's name was going to be Max, and he, he finally figures out, oh, you brought the cat with you. That's <laughs> that's why you, you're so adamant about this uh, thing. So, um, anyway, the episode opens with John meditating. The cat's out there uh, with him, and Jane just starts going through his stuff, and you can tell John's not just real happy about this, uh, yeah, yeah. but he also doesn't make a big stink about it either, and he says that he's going to go through her stuff as well, and she. He's like, okay, whatever. Uh, and then when she's gone to go get breakfast, he starts going through her computer. And we later find out that she does this on purpose, that she leaves up a, a porn site to uh, cannibal porn. Yeah, uh, cannibal porn, yeah. <laughs> and she leaves that up on purpose so that he will find that, so that she can just kind of play around with him. Uh, like I said, it just was really interesting. Uh, it's yeah. an interesting way to start the, start the episode. But on her way back she encounters their neighbor, who is played by Paul Dano. Uh, look, Paul Dano does make one other quick appearance in, in episode four. He does show up again, but we haven't seen That's the only yeah, time. Should, yeah, four, yeah. He show, he's in the background at the... At the uh, farmer's market uh, thing, yeah. Yeah, farmer's market, yeah. When you look at the IMDb page, and it says, if you look at the, if you go and look like at the, the homepage, it like says stars, and it says Donald Glover, Maya Erskine, and Paul Dano. So I'm... Yeah. I think... He I has to have a much bigger part. Yeah. I don't think this is just, you know, a cameo. I think he's going to show oh, up yeah. much later on in this Yeah, thing. yeah. I, I would imagine the last two episodes have to involve Paul Dano because, like, you don't add him... Yeah. Uh, you know, for no reason... Uh, like just a small where he's the neighbor. I right. mean, I guess, you know, he could be like throwing you off. I, I just don't believe it. I'm just curious. Do you think he is a spy or is he going to end up being a villain? I would lean towards villain. And that's just my personal. Yeah. That yeah. would just be my personal guess. But. I, I just wonder if he's with the agency as well, I guess is what I was wondering. I don't know. Well, and he, the agency could be the villain too. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, he could be with the agency, but they, they could be yeah. a villain. So who knows? And it's uh, nice to see Paul Dano playing a normal character. Well, normal for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, he good wasn't point. crying, and he wasn't like you know, like playing just like he, this overly he was weird a full character. Out villain. Yeah, yeah, like I said, so it was kind of hard to recognize him at first. But uh, he's not. He's upset about uh, a cat, and he thinks he's pretty certain it's Max, even though uh, Myerskin is denying that she has a cat. Uh, but he's pretty certain that a, a cat is pooping in his in his uh, his garden. And he's not happy about it, and she's saying, "I don't have a cat," but obviously she does. So uh, anyway. John is also watching this entire thing from the window. Uh, he's just kind of, you know, observing things. But they also get the... This is also when they get... Uh, they begin to set up more parameters for their relationship. They talk about, you know, not having sex and not being into the romance and all this type of stuff. Uh, but they also get the their second mission, which is to administer a true serum to the highest bidder of an Andy Warhol painting at an auction. Uh, and when we get to the auction... Again, they make they they're really trying to show us just how smart these two people are because they get there, they're both looking dressed extremely well. John recognizes that if there's going to be any black people in this in this uh, gallery in this art gallery auction, they're probably all going to know each other, and he's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So he joins the wait staff. He just takes off his coat and ends up joining the wait staff for this thing. So, like I said, they're showing us that he's smart, and you know. 
my Erskine's Jane wasn't just real thrilled with this idea, but she goes along with it. Yeah. Like I said, I thought I think it's great that they're showing us this, but I'm, yeah. it makes me. This is when we get to episode four. I'll talk about why I have some issues with this. But what were your thoughts about how they're getting into this thing? Yeah, I thought he made probably made the right call on this. Right. That he was able to really, you know, own the room where he's walking around and right. and and scanning. And like you said, the chances of there being just a handful of black people and they're all going to know each other. I think he made the right call there. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, they're both looking for the highest bidder. They're both trying to figure out who that is. And we, as we're going through this thing, we end up seeing that the highest bidder is a character played by John Turturro, uh, who was, oh, we covered a couple of times here on, on the podcast. He's been in Severance. He was in the Batman. Um, and he's the character's name is Eric Sheeng. I think is how he pronounced his name. Uh, I thought it was Eric Shane. Maybe. I, like I said, I tried to listen to it, and I could not hear it. Yeah. Let me see if they got yeah. his character on IMDb yet. I don't know if they do uh, or not. IMDb, it says Eric Shane. Okay, okay. I did not see his... Okay, yeah, it is Eric Shane. I couldn't hear... When he was saying it, I couldn't hear it, but yeah, yeah you're correct. A, yeah. Yeah, so it is Eric Shane. So uh, this is the target. This is the person that they are going to see. He is like this multi-billionaire person that uh, they're supposed to be tracking down and we don't really know why they're tracking him down but basically the mission was administer a truth theorem to him and they gave him some you know some parameters uh that they had to follow uh one only one dose uh and two no casualties at all uh so like i said those are the things yeah. that they said and, that, and no uh no uh witnesses. people watching yeah, no witnesses, witnesses. Yeah, yeah so those are the three parameters that they give to john and jane and so you know this is the thing that they're trying to make sure that they that they are accomplishing when they're when they're doing this um when they're talking to him when when maya's uh jane is talking to him it they both quickly realize that he may or may not really be into women uh, so like i said that's yeah th they're kind of noticing that pretty quickly and he's very mysterious acting the whole time yeah he is he's he's very odd when he's when he's talking yeah. to to jane so and he she, was really infatuated with one of the waiters yes one of the waiters that really caught his eye so so jane yeah. convinces him to uh take a member of the waitstaff pay them to do whatever they want and the person that she picks obviously is john uh and so we get them in, we get our, our three characters in this room. And then Eric, I don't want to kink shame here, but, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. if this is what you're into, great. But he has them act like dogs. Uh, so they're yes. all down on all fours and they're like, like getting to know each other. They're like a dog would. So they're sniffing each other and they're kissing uh, like a dog's would kiss. And then he starts to join in. Like I said, Whatever Very floats odd. your boat. Whatever. Yeah. But uh, the problem is they have not really nailed down who was actually going to administer the truth serum. And so they both administer the truth serum at the same time. And now they have broken their... The uh, the first part the the first parameter of the mission was no cat was only use one serum. And the reason why is because it could end up being deadly. Um, so he's freaking out because he has two doses of this thing in here it's obviously he's it's he's having a really bad reaction to having two uh he ends up darting off into the crowd uh and then he starts getting on the microphone and telling all these awful things about dark all the people that, yeah these really dark yeah. secrets what were your thoughts on this whole uh i, this I thought it was hilarious i love john deter yeah, anytime great. you could and anytime you could get him playing a weird character in a comedy type role it's he's just fantastic and like you said when he's throwing out all the names right it was just hilarious and then the the scene afterwards where you know they try to rescue him right I, I again i thought he was hilarious oh yeah uh so like he starts like just like saying all this stuff uh that and the idea was the mission was to like get as much information out of them out of him as they possibly could just anything that he was says they have to kind of make note of and record and relay it back to to the company uh and he starts doing this when they get him back to their home uh but the problem is he ends up dying and also there was a whole bunch of people who saw him just spilling his guts in front of the in front of at the auction so basically all three parameters were broken they they gave him two doses there were witnesses and there were casualties uh so this was he said they kind of messed up basically on all fronts on this thing um when they do finally uh 
when they do finally get the body taken care of, they decide to put it in the, the uh, composter. Uh, this is what they decide to do with the body. That's, you know, I guess it's the best thing to do. Uh, but they also have a really hard yeah. time when they're trying to break oh, the bones. Uh, gross. Yeah, it was gross. Uh, they were having a hard time not to vomit. We were having the same problem. Uh, but it ends with the two still trying to kind of fill each other out. Uh, and I don't know if it's... Uh, well, this is also when Jane reveals that the cannibal porn site was just a joke that she was kind of basically yeah. trying to play on him. But they also kissed for real. They decided that they want to kiss, and this also eventually leads to sex. And this is when uh, they have broken basically all the parameters they'd established about their relationship. And, you know, that part of it's done. But the episode ends because previously, right before uh, they end up having their romantic encounter, John had sent in... All the information that they got from uh, from Eric Chain, they got all the, they send in all the information, and he does tell them that there was a casualty, and he says sorry, and then we get this ominous message from the computer saying mission incomplete, one fail, two fails remaining. Uh, like I said, and it just makes you think back to what happened at the beginning of episode one when you saw that. Yeah. What were your thoughts about the, the end of this episode? Uh, I thought, you know, of course, murder brings to intimacy. Yes, you know, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, uh, it was uh, it was expected that at, at some point soon these two were going to get together. Oh, yeah. I thought their scene was, like I said, they they were really fun together right. when they're talking about the cartoon and when Jane was oh, yeah. talking about the racist voice. From I mean, it was really cute watching them get together. And yeah. It was a great. It was a really fun episode. And these first two episodes were directed by a Hero. Marah, and uh, if you've ever watched uh, Donald Glover's other series, Atlanta, uh, Hero directed most of those episodes. Okay. He also directed a lot of episodes of Barry, especially the uh, Ron Ronnie Lilly, the crazy episode. This guy's really good at action. He also directed the pilot and the last episode of Station Eleven. So we've okay. seen some. So a very capable director, a very yeah. good director. Uh, I'm not surprised that Donald Glover gave him the, the first couple of episodes. Yeah, uh, like I said, I thought it was good. I thought the first two episodes were good. I thought I was I was on board. I was enjoying I was enjoying the show. Again, I was thinking this probably would have worked really well as a yeah. as a week to week. But again, they don't ask us. So, all right, let's take a real quick break and then we'll discuss the last two episodes. All right, episode three. This is called First Vacation, uh, and it's. This is the first one where it becomes obvious that there is some time passing between episodes uh, because mm -hmm. apparently there has been at least a, some time because that they're not just when we they start talking in this thing the, the, you know they've talked about how many times they've they've slept together but they don't actually sleep in the same bed they don't wake up together uh, so like I said they're t they're discussing that here at the beginning of it but the the mission they tell us at the beginning of this thing. They're headed to the Italian Dolomites, uh, where they have to spy on two people, Gaval and Parker Martin. Uh, Gaval is played by Sharon Horgan. Uh, I'm glad you... I thought it was... Uh, who did I tell you I thought that was? You thought it was Connie Britt. Yeah, that's who I thought it was, but uh, you, you correctly identified her as... Um, Shannon, oh crap, hold on, off my notes. Uh, Sharon Horgan. Sharon, Sharon Horgan. And Billy Campbell, who hasn't done just a whole lot, but he's best known for playing uh, the Rocketeer way back in 89. Was that yeah. when the Rocketeer came out? Or 90, somewhere around there? Yeah, I think it was early 90s. Uh, like I said, those are the things that he was kind of, that's what he's kind of, he's best known for. He's done a lot of, he's done a lot of uh, small parts. A lot of parts. TV. Yeah, a lot yeah. of TV. And he, was, he was in the show The Killing. He had a very big part of that. Okay, I never, I never saw that, so. Uh, he's no. good. Uh, but anyway, so this is this is the couple that they're supposed to be spying on these are the people this is the couple that they're supposed to be getting the information from so the point of their uh, their espionage in this one is they have to uh watch them the entire time they have to bug their phones before 5 p.m on whatever day it is that way they can record a very important phone call that is going to come through uh for both of them so that's the whole point of this thing but while they're also doing this uh they're discussing their actual relationship because they are very much the romance is fully on at this point, uh, but this is the this is the episode where we you know we start to see some of the issues that they have in in, in their rela relationship. Um, like I said, it's at the forefront of this thing, and basically uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting before we get into the romance about this, they don't really do anything with this, but the first night that they are there, they're sleeping in bed together. And they both hear something, and it awakens them. Oh, you you don't you don't realize what that was. What was it? 
She farted. Oh, that's what that was. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's why they discuss it at the end. Uh, yeah. Okay. She, I, she. Yeah. That's it, what that was. She farted so loud it woke them both up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't catch that. I was really wondering, like, why didn't they revisit that? What was going on there? So. Yeah. Uh, they bring it up at the end of the episode. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that's what they were talking about. All right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense now. I'm glad you, you caught that because I sure didn't catch it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, the next morning after I they. I'm here for your fart catching. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, the next morning, they are the you know they they they're they're in uh, the mission with full force. Uh, they're still very they're still very much romantic and very happy. But when John starts to talk to this other couple there, this is kind of when things start oh, yeah. to kind of get rocky for the two of them because John's very much into let me you know I want to make vacation friends and Jane's like I hate vacation friends. The whole point of having a vacation is to get away from your 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 friends and your family. Uh, so why do you want to make new ones? But um, and Jane's also worried about failing again she yeah. really wants to get this mission done well yeah because she didn't like the whole you know two fails remaining that really concerned yeah. her uh that was a that was a big concern and personally to me i would be as concerned as she is absolutely and john doesn't seem to be all that concerned about it uh but the for the first time we see that john takes a phone call from his mother um and the point of this thing was they said you are going to have to cut all all ties with your previous life if you take this job. And he has obviously not done so with with his mom because he's yeah. taking a call from his mom and this starts an argument. Apparently they've, they've had discussions about this before uh, and and Jane's not happy about it and she has every right to be because like I said that was kind of the yeah. parameters of the relationship and it you know it does make you wonder if John's really truly taking this job as seriously as he should so um what were your thoughts about that just that entire interaction yeah I thought that was odd that he was still talking to his yeah, mother it's really dangerous was. for his mother yeah because in Jane po points that out she says you know, it's not only just dangerous for you to be talking to her, it's dangerous for her because she, yeah. she's not supposed to know about any of this type of stuff. And uh, John's like, well, I'm all that she's got, so, you know, I, I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but yeah, it's dangerous for her. And, and we see in the fourth episode where he runs into an ex-girlfriend and yeah. starts to chat with her. That, yeah. Like you said, he's not taking this as serious as he should. Yeah, we're going to talk about that because that's one of my issues when we get to episode four or so. Uh, but they have one complication about this entire mission. John can't ski. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, like, when he gets, when they get to the mountain and they, like, start trying to follow him, John is, is in no way can keep up. Uh, he he did up. much better than I would have. I can tell you that. He lasted for, like, a minute. <laughs> uh, he probably lasted more than I could now. I've actually been skiing a couple yeah. times. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's hard. <laughs> oh, my goodness, it is yeah. very hard. Uh, I've got bad knees now, and you've got to have good knees to, to go skiing, so I probably couldn't last very long doing it now. So, uh, uh, but then they have another complication. The vacation friends again pop up when they're trying to tell uh, uh, the two people, and Jane has just had enough, and she just goes off on these two people. Oh, uh, man. I thought that was that funny. was funny. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. What were your thoughts? Maya Erskine is very funny. She's been in a lot of comedies. Yeah. She's in that show Pen Fifteen on Peacock and Hulu or Hulu. I think it's on right. Hulu. And she she you know known for her comedy. She's really funny in this. Yeah, she she really is. I thought she was. I thought she's really really good in this. Uh, but they're also while they're observing the Martins, you know, some of this they start having some of the same issues, or they start talking about some of the same issues because yeah, the Martins, and let's just mention the Martins hate each other. Yeah, they they are not in a good place at this point in in their marriage. So, and like I said, this kind of starting to reflect in in the relationship of John and, and Jane as well. Uh, an argument about the status of the marriage leads the two of them to go their separate ways. So um, Parker and Gaval end up going in two different directions uh, because. Parker ends up saying, you know, do you want the divorce or something like along those lines? I can't remember exactly what it was that he says, but um, he, he, he doesn't really feel like Gaval is really into this, into this marriage anymore. Uh, so they decide to go their separate ways. Uh, and this gives them both the opportunities to go ahead and follow both of them and to bug their phones. So uh, now my, this, where Jane follows Parker makes sense. She goes to him and follows him at the bar. John follows her into a spa, into a sauna. Uh, like, do you do you have like mixed couple, like mixed gender saunas? I've never seen that before in my entire life. I'm I'm not exactly sure about that. I yeah. mean, this is Europe. Europe is a uh, lot true. more open about that kind of stuff. So I, I would imagine there it's probably common. Well, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. that. That would probably make more sense over in Europe than it would here. But like I said, that was, I was like, oh, I guess. Yeah. Just if long. you go to your YMCA, it's not like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Happening. And let me tell you, there's going to be some old dude naked in there. 
You're not oh, going to yes. want to go in there. <laughs> Don't go in there because they'll just have, they won't have the towel on or anything no, like that. No, they will not have the towel on. Yeah, it's it's always it's always interesting that you know you see that because it's it's pretty much going to happen. So, yeah. but wherever whatever why you go to any city in the U.S., there's going to be an old <laughs> white dude naked in there. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, so they finally do get their that they do end up getting their phones. They both get they they get both of them bugged. Uh, like I said, uh, I was curious how this was to happen. But apparently, they just had to put this little piece of a thing on on their phones yeah. and it bugged them so like i said i'm not really sure how that works but nevertheless uh but so they're they finally get them bugged and they're listening in on their phone calls and as john is listening to gaval's phone he realized that she is being abducted and we assume that this is the phone call that they were supposed to to record uh the kidnappers tell parker that they want all of his shares in whatever company it is that they are running and if they don't tell them if, if they don't agree, if he doesn't agree to it they're going to kill his wife and surprisingly he says no uh and yeah. and so like the the, the kidnappers say all right well she's going to die uh and so this is like, and this is when the two of them go. Uh, John and Jane have just kind of completely different ideas about how, how sh- what should happen next. John is like, I can't let this woman die. They're going to kill her. I can't let this happen. And Jane is like, No, you just got to let it go. It sucks that that's going to happen to her, but you got to let it go. Uh, and then they have another problem because John has turned off his location. He's not allowing her to see his location uh, on his phone. But like I said, I just thought it was interesting that you know that he said one he said no and just john's reaction and jane's reaction what were your thoughts about all of it I, yeah i thought the same thing i was like i'm surprised they're not on the same page on this because it got really hairy it did. for john it was nearly killed because mm-hmm. you know he didn't tell her where he was and i love like all the passive aggressive text oh, yeah. she was sending that that was very funny right yeah it was great because she eventually when she meets up in later it's like you're going to see a lot of text so just kind of ignore them <laughs> uh but when yeah. we get when the when parker and Gavali get back together you know she confronts him about saying you how could you tell them no how could you how could you do that and he's like well we had discussed you know if that ever happened we would say no we wouldn't we wouldn't we wouldn't agree to it and she's like you still you did it anyway uh but like it took him almost having her killed to realize that he still loved her and he still wanted to be with her and maybe they're going to work it out who knows but uh, <laughs> uh i don't know i, don't I have know. my doubts about this too yeah i've kind of i've kind of got my i got, kind of got some doubts as well so but the uh, john and jane they are rec- they're reconciling back on their train ride what i guess is back to the airport i'm, I'm assuming yeah. uh and they're reconciling and they're talking about the fart and this is like i said i didn't put the two and two together but uh but yeah so and she's like is Still denying the fact that she farted him, but he's he he has he is up to, up to speed on this. So, uh, like I said, I thought it was a good episode. What were your thoughts on episode three? Yeah, I thought this was a really fun episode as well. I like how they went to a different location. Right. We again got to see where they're still the 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 John, John and Jane are still working on their relationship, right. still work on the parameters of their working relationship right. as well. So that was interesting to watch. And again, man, when you're watching two really good actors Mm -hmm. and with so much chemistry it's just a fun hour tv yeah it really is like i said i I enjoyed this episode i was i was enjoying it a lot uh and then we get to episode four episode four is called double date uh this is where i started to have some really i i do think they kind of undermine a lot of what they did in the first three episodes in this and we'll talk so let's go ahead and kind of get into this yeah i'm interested to see what what you say here all right so the episode starts again with the high high computer uh he the high high computer says they have the day off so uh we have no missions uh so john and jane they're at a farmer's market uh and this is the first where issue where i'm having where i'm struggling with this idea of uh because john and jane they run into an ex of john's uh named rooney uh she's played by Ursula Corbero. She's apparently an Italian model. Uh, I've looked her up uh, just to see what all she has done. Uh, and look, the, they obviously do one thing where, you know, she's jealous. Uh, you can tell there's yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. there's some jealousy yeah. there. But the, again, this is, you've mentioned this, and I was, this is what I was getting ready to talk about. He recognized her, he interacts with her, and, you know, he is still not committing to this whole, you know, cutting your everything off about your previous life so like he's not committing that but where i have an issue and this is the first thing i have an issue with she made a huge jane makes a huge stink about him not cutting off everything from his previous life so when he does this he doesn't shouldn't give him a hard time about it she just kind of like jokes around with him about the, the whole only having one hand thing like so she's not even mentioning like you know you still 
at this point, she should have confronted yeah. him about saying, you still aren't cutting off the, your outside life. You shouldn't have talked to that woman. When you saw her, you should have said, hey, we need to get out of here. This woman might recognize me. Like I said, so I'm, I don't understand this. Um, this is one aspect, and we're going to talk about some more, but what were your thoughts on this? Uh, I, I can see where you're saying that. I am surprised she didn't bring it up. I thought she was so jealous that she made up the, uh, the second hand thing, which was very funny because yeah. he wasn't sure that she didn't have a second hand and that's another, until the end of the episode. I thought that was hilarious. And that's another thing that I have an issue with. So this is the first of, an, of two things that they do because they've made it in the first three episodes. They do a really good job of making it appear that John's really smart and really intelligent. And both of them really are. But all it takes for this, the man was like with her in a relationship and he's easily convinced that she doesn't have a second hand. So they're, yeah. again, they're undermining that. Uh, because, uh, like I said, he this should have been like he shouldn't have fallen for this this easily. I, I just don't think he should yeah, have. Yeah. And then another thing. So we get to the next the next scene. Uh, John is apparently wants an orange juice from he orders an orange juice from this uh, guy who's just an absolute jerk. And like I said, I don't know exactly yeah. why. You're, if you're in the the service business, you're going to treat your customers this way. But nevertheless, he wants a he wants an orange juice, and the order for John Smith is some green weird drink that i've no idea uh but it's for john smith and this is when we see uh wagner moore's character who also is john smith and this is when he recognizes that this is another john smith and here's another thing why I'm, i struggle with this because at this point i if if i'm john and i'm doing the what i do in, in the work that they do i would be incredibly suspicious about another just john smith who's doing the exact same thing showing just happened up. to showing up like I said, yeah, I would yeah. have been incredibly suspicious, but he just starts talking to him like, oh, great, we can talk about this. Like I said, that's not consistent with the character they have built for the first three episodes. I, I yeah. have real issues with that. What are your so thoughts? You, you think the other John and Jane were brought into them for a reason? I don't know. Well, I don't know that they, that they were. Yeah. But if I'm, yeah. if, but if I'm, if I'm Donald Glover's John, I'm I'm I got red flags popping up all over the place. Well, I would say Jane kind of. She kind of does. But, she kind of does, yeah. But John doesn't. Like I said, he made they made him out to be this incredibly smart person, and yeah. I, I don't feel like he's coming across as inc- he comes across really dumb in this episode. At least that's my, was my okay. thought. I, yeah, I, I I guess I could see that. Yeah. So, like I said, and then we're gonna talk about the two characters. I look, I love what Wagner Moore and Parker Posey are doing. Uh, uh, yeah, they are really good. They are really good, but I do have like. I don't understand the motivations for their characters. I, I, I and we'll talk about it. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So Wagner Moore, well, I, I believe they're in more episodes. So I think we're going to hear. I hope it, so. Figure out. Yeah, yeah. Because I think they're listed for two episodes. I, I hope so. Because like I said, this whole episode just did not make a whole lot of sense to me when 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 I was watching it. Because when it ends. I didn't understand what they were trying to accomplish with this with this episode uh, because it just doesn't really seem to fit narratively. So I'm hoping that it will fit later on in in, in the series. But it, it, I really had a hard time with this one. Um, but anyway, so like I said, John introduces uh, Wagner Moore, who is best known from Marcos. Uh, I know he's been in other things, but that's the only thing I know him from. You know him from anything else? Yeah, he was in. Uh, I watched a show on Apple called Shining Girls. He was in okay. that. He was in the Gray Man. Uh, he was in something else I saw. Yeah, he's been he's been working pretty good uh, of late. Yeah, so he uh, he was really good. So like like I said, they're they're yeah. I think he was great. Like I said, I, I thought the performances of Parker Posey and, and Wagner Moore are great. Yeah. So uh, Wagner Moore, you know, uh, is talking to the two of them, and they decide they're going to have a, a dinner date together. They're going to come over to John and Jane's place, and they're going to have dinner together. Um, and when they get there. We uh, discover that Parker Posey is his Jane. Uh, Parker Posey's done a ton of things. Uh, yeah. m- most recently, what I've seen her in was uh, Netflix's uh, reimagining of Lost in Space. Uh, she plays Doctor. Oh, yeah, Smith. yeah. She plays Doctor Smith. And look, and when Parker Posey shows up, I'm all, I'm immediately my antenna immediately goes up for Con Man. <laughs> that's right, right. That's pretty- and she's in the next season of White Lotus as well. Oh, she's one she of the really? stars of that. So okay, I, can't I didn't know wait. that. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw Parker Posey show up? I was I love Parker Posey ever since Days of Confused. Yes. You know, uh, mm-hmm. any, 
and she's fantastic in all the Christopher Guest movies. Like you said, she's usually you know a conniving person, right. usually kind of snooty acting. You just never know what you're going to get from her, and she's always a good character and a fellow Mississippian. Yeah, she is. So, uh, yeah. you know, kudos to her. So, uh, but Jane's giving her a tour of the house, and they, they finally start to refer to their employer as the company. We haven't really had a name for this thing. It's Till not really technically a name, it's just the company, but they all refer to it as the company. So it's like I said, it's the closest yeah. thing that we've got to a name for this incredibly secret organization that we get. Uh, she, Jane, the other Jane, also gives her some advice. She says uh, because uh, my Erskine's Jane asks, you know, uh, you know, do you ever wonder about these people and who it is that we actually are working for? And Parker Posey says, you know, if you ever, uh, she says. Uh, don't ever get don't let something like that ever get in the way of your own happiness i really don't know what that meant but it seemed to make an impact on maya erskine's character yeah uh anyway so during dinner uh the other john says he didn't start uh with this jane so this is a she's a replacement I, did they say yeah. why why they had to replace her because i couldn't catch that he, he, yeah i don't i don't think he did yeah. okay so this is a this is a, he had a, an original jane but this is a, this is a replacement and like i said i didn't think that they mentioned why she was had to replace his first jane but and apparently they have another level because the our jane and john are high risk and these guys are super high right. risk so there's actually seems to be another level of of what they are of the company that they're working for but they also begin to discuss the romantic aspects of their relationship so yes initially our jane and john were very hesitant to get into the romantic aspects of it parker posey and wagner Moore, they said you know we were ripping each other's clothes off to start with so uh yeah. Anyway, you know, this kind of goes on for a while. Uh, They then go to another room where they're having, uh, you know, they're uh, doing the after dinner conversation. This is when John, uh, played Donald Glover's John, asked about what their most dangerous mission was. And they said, they both look at each other and they pretty much easily say, you know, it was Bali. Uh, New John tells, or the original John, that, you know, the, the secret to getting out of any situation, no matter how tight it is, is to control your breath. It makes an impact on Donald Glover, but they la- end up laughing about it later on in the episode. I have to say, uh, Wagner's on to something. If you could control yeah. your breath and, and control your situation, he's right. Yeah, he, he's not wrong. So, uh, but like I said, I don't think they took as much. No, they did not value the advice as much when we get to the end of this episode as they are doing as they are valuing it as the episode is actually going along. So, uh, they end up having to leave because they say they're actually on the clock and they're getting ready to go to a, a mission, and they invite Donald uh, Glover and Maya Erskine's characters to come along. So. Uh, you know, they're like it's like just a party on the way to to the mission. Yeah. They're just having fun, and like I said, it's just kind of a weird mood uh, the entire mm-hmm. time. So I wasn't really sure what was happening here. But when they get to this helicopter that they're flying on, they put their stuff in there. Uh, Donald Glover and Maya Erskine get in, but then Wagner Moore and Parker Posey don't. They just are sending them off by themselves. So, what were your initial thoughts when they when they send them off by themselves? The, the whole, I was just like, where was this a setup the whole time? Right. Are they just trying to get them, you know, a mission? That's why I was I was more interested to see what, when they show up again. Like, what was the point of this? Because as they mentioned, they were they're listed as super high risk agents, right? And our Jane and John are high risk, right? Are just high risk. So I don't know if this was trying to convince them to go super high risk or not. But the mission they get into is just insane. Well, uh, I mean, the mission. I'm like, so they get, when they leave, it's nighttime, and when they arrive, they uh, apparently they've been on this this helicopter for a long time because yeah, they're like well, it looked like they were in South America. Yeah, I know that's what that's what I put down. It looked like they were in Latin America of some sort and in a jungle. You know, they went from yeah. New York to wherever, which I'm pretty sure you can't do that in a helicopter. No, uh, so they obviously would have had to make stops. But they've been on a helicopter for quite a while. They wake up. Uh, and this mission, you know, they're, they're going through this jungle. Some people come looking for them. They end up kidnapping them. Uh, and John and Jane, you know, they're feeling, fearing for their lives. John tells her, I love her. She says, I love you too. He gets a machete and just butchers these guys to death. Yeah. And these are, these are, you know, 17, 18 year old kids that they end up killing. Uh, and, and, and they're later. Yeah. So, like I said. Well, they said they didn't kill the kids. They only killed the leader. Oh, uh, they only killed the, the leader? Machete. Okay, I thought they killed all of them. I, I don't know. There was, you couldn't see what was going on, and there's blood everywhere. Right. So, and my initial thought was, you know, they just conned them. They, they just conned them into doing yeah. this, this, this mission because they didn't want to do it because it was yeah. going to be too dangerous. But 
because they would have because they still get the money even though the mission was completed yeah. but they paid them so this is another thing i don't i don't know what the purpose of this entire yeah. episode was because i don't know what the purpose of these two were because they didn't yeah they didn't con them but they and they no, also go ahead they acted uh parker posey acted like confused and surprised that the that their mission went so bad right so like i said i'm really and they gave him the whole money yeah i think we're gonna get a payoff you know the next four episodes i hope at so. some point because they're listed again uh so to, to what this reasoning was okay well i i hope that is the case because i was really confused because yeah, i don't think yeah. they want to shy away from dangerous stuff because they say they had to kill a mr and mrs smith and we assume that it was Alexander yeah, uh, Skarsgård yeah, yeah. and Isa Gonzalez at the beginning of this thing. Like I said, we just assumed that that's the case. You know, if you're yeah. going and killing other Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that's a dangerous thing that you have to go do. Right. So I don't think they're just trying to get away from doing dangerous stuff. And they don't, you know, they don't short them on the cash. So like I said, I was... That was $375,000. Yeah, $375,000. Wow. Like when she makes transfer, she holds up his... her uh, My screen holds her phone up to Don Glover and like, hey, they did actually pay us. So... Um, yeah. Like I said, I was just really confused by this entire episode. Uh, I'm hoping a lot of it will make sense. When, like, I also forgot to mention that Paul Dano was talking to my Erskine again for a very, very brief moment yeah. in, uh, at the farmer's market. But uh, like I said, the, the whole episode just confused me. I, I don't know where they're going with that. I didn't I didn't understand like just the purpose of Parker Posey and Wagner Moore's characters. Uh, I don't like the fact that they seem to kind of making John look dumb in this thing uh, because they haven't made him, they've made him look very, very intelligent throughout the course of this. So like I said, I had some real issues with this yeah, one episode. Yeah, I can see what you're saying about the John. I thought, you know, previously they kind of made him sloppy on, he wasn't giving away, yeah. you know, his prior life. But I, I can see what you're saying about the dumb part. I really think the other part's going to pay off on I what so. this was for. Uh, that is my hope because like I said, because if they don't, then I don't really know what the purpose of, of this entire yeah. thing was. So um, anyway, so they're back at home. Uh, John is looking at the Instagram of his ex because he's trying to make sure that she actually did have two hands and he does confirm that she does have two hands uh, and they just start laughing and you know, they're just like talking about how just insane how they just kind of went along with this stuff and just how insane it was yeah. they were they were going along with it and they're kind of giggling and laughing and that's how the episode ends but uh your thoughts on how this fourth episode comes to a conclusion i i have to say i thought it was hilarious when he finally realized she did have two heads yes, and they laugh about it and then they make fun of uh make fun of why uh, yeah so i i thought i love the way it ended with them laughing together yeah because like i said they're just really you know ultimately at the end of the yeah. day this is just a couple that are in love and they just yeah. have like and i was going to say i think a lot of this episode was a show they really do love each other because that you know uh john does say whatever happens i love you right you know when it looks like he may be getting killed so i thought that was sweet to see yeah i think you're correct about that so uh like i said just interesting stuff all around so all right uh anything else you want to discuss with this before we do our weekly awards uh no i think i think we're ready for the awards all right let's do some weekly awards All right, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we are covering a season of a television show, we do four weekly awards. Uh, up first, I'm sorry, three weekly awards. Up first is our Tyrion Lannister, the MVP for the week. Who is your MVP? I think we, I think this, there's yeah, not this way to go. I, I, yeah, I think it's got to be our code lead, yeah, Donald Glover and Maya Erskine. Well, let's shut out Maya Erskine a little bit more. She came into this late because she was supposed yeah. to be Florence Waller Bridge. Right. She's also taking the place of Angelina Jolie, and I gotta tell you, I love her character. Yeah. I love her acting. She is doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, I'm with you. I think she's doing a great job. I, I really have enjoyed her character. Um, yeah, I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff that she's been in. I've seen a few things. But she was in. She was in uh, Obi Wan. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, which you saw, and then uh, she's in that Blue Eye Samurai. Of yes. course, her voice. Yes, yeah, yeah. her voice is. I'm trying to remember which. Oh, uh, she's in a fantastic movie with uh, Jack Quaid. It's a uh, romantic comedy called Plus One. I think it's for Amazon. I mean, uh, excuse me for Hulu. It is really fun. It's called Plus One. Her and Jack Quaid are in a okay. romantic comedy. 
Yeah, Maya Erskine, she is the main character of, I forgot she was the main character in uh, Blue Eye Samurai. Uh, and she's really, really good in that. Uh, so, like I said, yeah. I, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed yeah. her stuff. I forget that, you know, when you're watching animation, it's kind of hard sometimes yeah. to remember who it is that's actually doing the stuff. But yeah, she's really good in Blue Eye. Again, I've recommended that on a number of occasions. I want to recommend that again in, in this moment. So, uh, but yeah, th- they're the obvious point picks for this. Uh, yeah. Your next one is the Ekta Along, the best scene of the week. What you got? I think the cake explosion to oh, yeah. to them mm-hmm. escaping because that was like, oh, they really are killing people in this show. Because like, you know, when they deliver the cake, you're not exactly sure what's what this job is about. It's like, oh no, they're yeah. really spies. They're really killers. Yeah, that it, it does really let you know that this this job is really hard and it's going to be really dangerous and it's going to be difficult for them to pull off some of the things that they have to pull off in, in the course of the episode so, or the course of the season. Uh, the best line of the week, the if you come with the king, you best not miss. What's your best line? I'm going with John in the last episode when things are getting hairy, when he says, whatever happens, I love you. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, I thought that was a really good one as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård, like right before he gets shot, when he's, I don't remember what he was that he said. I meant to write it down, but I thought that was a good one as well. Because uh, he's getting ready to like just talk about like how they're getting ready to leave, and then the next thing we know, he yeah. gets shot. So, um, But yeah, there's there's a lot of good ones. Uh, Wagner Moore had some good ones. Uh, yeah. And this, this show is very funny. I, yeah, I'll it is. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got it's got a lot of good funny moments in it. Uh, it's shot. It almost looks like it's shot on on actual film. I don't know if that is the case, uh, but the the cinematography of it it kind of yeah. appears that way. I don't know. Did you get that same thought? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it does look like. That. I don't know if that's the case or not, but like I said, I, I could if that if it, we end up finding that out, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, that would, if they do did shoot this thing actually on film and not digitally. So. All right, uh, rating time. Here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we have a five-tier rating system. At the top of our list is a succession. Beneath the succession is a loss. Middle of the road for us is a friends. Beneath the friends is a full house. And bottom of the barrel for us is a Baywatch. What are you rating the first four episodes? I'd give it a loss. I think it's a really fun watch. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. It has a lot of potential. Yeah. And I'm still shocked at what Amazon's doing with this. I think this is a really good show. Yeah, it's a loss. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm, I, that fourth episode it dragged it down a little bit for me. Uh, it wasn't a succession, but it, 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 any hopes of getting it to a succession in that fourth episode uh, it did not help it for me. Uh, I'm also keeping keeping it at a loss simply because I hope that they are going to kind of expound upon some of the things with Wagner Moore and Parker Posey's character because otherwise this, they're I just don't understand what they were doing with those two in, in this episode in that final episode but uh, like I said I did enjoy it overall uh, even and like I said the performances though one of the things I did like about that fourth episode the performances of the four the four characters they're just absolutely amazing they they do great yeah. well, uh, even if I don't know, understand the narrative <laughs> but also let's mention I think Wagner Mora and Parker Posey's character are also showing them, you're not getting out of this. Yeah. You just don't quit. Because, you know, at one point, uh, John and J- our John and Jane had made a pact that when we get the money we want, let's just both leave. And there's right. like, yeah, Wagner yeah. laughs at them. It's like, no, that's not how this goes. So yeah. I think that was part of it as well. It's like, no, you're in this for life. This isn't like, you know you're in this till you can't do these missions right. anymore and then you're in an office yeah you just can't escape and go to bali i mean go to you know you go wherever Saint you want right? yeah yeah i think that's one of the things that they're trying to put out uh the, i think that is one of the things they're trying to to say here at in in this episode i think you're correct about that so all right uh this is our second episode of the week so we want to do some things that we are looking forward to what are some things you are looking forward to well, uh, I have not been looking forward to this movie because I was like, why the hell would they remake <laughs> Roadhouse? Oh, yeah. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, God, this actually looks good. Yeah. Damn you, Jake John Hall. This looks fun. Roadhouse comes out March 21st. If this wasn't called Roadhouse, I would be so excited for this movie. It's on Amazon Prime, so I'm yeah. definitely going to watch it. It's it's directed by Doug Liman, who's a fantastic director. Right. The first Bourne movie, Swingers with Vince Vaughn. And uh, it's, he's done it. Oh, I th- he directed Mr. Mrs. Smith. What about Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, he's good at action. So it looks it looks pretty good. I, I'm going to give it a shot. So I, I love the original with uh, Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about this, and I'm surprised to be saying that. Uh, the last thing I will say, Tokyo Vice uh, Season 2 starts on Max February 8th. And yeah, they're like first the season. season. I didn't finish it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really good, and I'm kind of surprised it got a Season 2. But, uh, <laughs> 
you know, I'm glad it's here. So Ansel Eckert, Michael Mann, I'm here for it. Yeah, uh, like I said, I never finished first season, but I do need to, I need to finish it and check it out so I can check out season two. Uh, is that all you got? Anything else? Yeah, that's it. Uh, first thing I've got, uh, Avatar The Last Air- Airbender. I don't know if this is going to be any good, uh, but it is the live action. They tried to make a live action movie of this a few years ago. It did not go over very well, uh, but uh, they, are, they are trying again. Netflix is doing a series on it. Uh, it's a beloved animated show. Uh, people who have watched, I, I have not seen the animated show, so I'm not familiar with it at all. It looks like it's going to be good, uh, but I, something tells me that the fans of this are probably not going to be real happy with it. Maybe the people oh, who sure. aren't, <laughs> maybe the people who aren't fans like me who haven't seen it, uh, maybe they will be able to probably uh, enjoy this more so than than other folks. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It looks like it's going to be good. Uh, when uh, let's see, we're recording this on this is releasing on February second. Uh, so a couple movies that are coming out that we're going to be recovering. Uh, our plan right now is to cover Madame Web. I don't know if it's going to be any good, but you know. But we're going to cover it, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you to look forward to it. So, yeah, uh, because it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we got a couple more weeks on that. So, uh, also another thing that we're covering, I can't wait to discuss. Uh, just kind of, we're, we're going to have some Dune stuff. So get get caught up on your Dune coverage. Yeah, uh, we're going to be covering the 1984 version of Dune here. I and, can't wait to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it's 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 bad, guys, but it, it's almost so bad that it's good. So, like I said, just check it out uh, and come back and listen to us. But, but the week before Dune comes out, we will do Dune Part One, and then when it actually makes it to the theater, Dune Part Two, we'll be covering it. So, looking forward to all that as well. So. All right. And also, uh, Justin's mother's favorite movie was Dune. It's one of her favorite Ford. movies. Yeah, one of her favorite so movies. So I'm going to watch and try to figure out which scenes she was into. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know because I'm not really sure. There's one scene that I'm pretty certain, and it actually has to do with a dog. So uh, but anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, so anything else you want to add before we sign off for the week? Appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I will echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.